Hello world, Shotgun here, back with another video. Now in this video, we are going to look into phishing or smishing, that is SMS phishing, and we are going to recreate a clone website in order to steal a credential um, in our second part of the video. Now, um, just before I start a video, just a bit of a disclaimer, please do not use this for a malicious purpose. Uh, this is just for educational purpose. Now, um, in the first part of the video, we are going to look into a couple of text messages um, that I've received. I've been getting a lot of interesting text that pretty much seem legitimate. And on the second part of the video, we are going to recreate it. Um, but if you are only here for the second part of the video, that's the Social Engineering Toolkit, uh, then I'll leave a timer down there somewhere. Please feel free to navigate to the part that you like. But if you want to have a look into a couple of SMSs that I've got, what are the patterns of this phishing text, and uh, why you should never click on a link that is sent to you on a text message, then please feel free to do so. Now, let's get started. Now, the text that I was talking about, it started like last year as well. Um, this one's just from yesterday. We'll, we'll skip that one for now. We'll do the oldest one. That would have been about a year ago. So it says, your account is locked. Proceed with additional verification. It makes it look like it's from ANZ Bank. Now, ANZ is a, a bank in Australia and New Zealand. Australia and New Zealand Bank. Um, and uh, it looks like a legitimate URL. Look at that, anz.com. And you'd think, oh yeah, that's, that's a legitimate URL. Clearly, that wasn't my day. So I, I might have responded to them. I don't really respond to these sort of emails or messages but yeah now this one is the one that I, that almost got me um i almost fell for it i'm not gonna lie so i clicked on the link as well um so this one said something like um hey your order has been held at our forwarding depot please follow your instruction here um and he gave me a link and the timing was so perfect one of my mate was sending me some stuff via post and he and he called me and he goes hey man i've sent you your stuff and then next minute i get a text I thought it was pretty legitimate and I clicked on it I clicked on it and then I went hold on something's not right because it's from FedEx we don't we don't use FedEx because it's an interstate post why would you not use an Australia post and use the FedEx instead so I did put the tracking number on Google and it was a scam almost failed for it now this one was something that I received yesterday um, now look at look at the sense of urgency that it creates it says a purchase of six hundred eighty-nine point eighty-eight dollars has been made using your card. Um, did you authorize it? If you didn't, visit this link to reverse your funds in some. Clearly, I haven't spent that much money today. Clearly, I haven't purchased anything in the morning. Ten fifty a.m. Almost six ninety dollars. It doesn't sound like me. So people usually think, "Ha, oh, this this is not me. I need to fix it." Click on this thing and then put their username and password, and that's how they get their credential, and then they actually take whatever's in your account. Uh, but yeah, so the link was functional yesterday, but they've already taken the link down. Now I opened it on sandboxed environment yesterday using my Kali Linux and uh, it was legit Combank pays. No one could say otherwise. If it wasn't for a URL, um, it was almost similar to this one, but it said Combank at the end. Um, but the website was just like a Combank's website. People who click on the link have no reason to not believe them because it does look like a Combank. It's literally, it, it is a Combank's website. <laughs> you you wouldn't be able to differentiate. And uh, that's how they get you. So this type of phishing attack, they call it smishing because they use SMS. Um, they sort of create a sense of urgency. Um, or they send you like threatening text like, oh, you're going to have to pay a tax or uh, there's going to be a law enforcement agency coming to your door. That sort of thing. So we usually get panicked and we want to get out of the situation. That's how we work. And we click on the link and give them info and uh that's it that's the sad part of the thing now the second part of this module i'm going to i'm going to show you guys how easy it is to create these sort of phishing websites now for this we are going to use our local lan environment and uh we are going to use the social engineering toolkit um, and we're going to use a credential harvest module in order to do it so let's get started let's get to the interesting part then just to make sure that my website's functional, I'm going to sum up. Um, the, the thing that I'm hosting in this website is, you know, accessible via LAN. I'm just going to start my Apache and see if it works. So we'll do sudo, select the user, yep, and bin, uh, hold on, what was it? Oh, it's sbin, not bin. Um, sbin, Apache, and then we'll start it. 
So that should start our Apache. Now if we go to um, uh, 127.0.0.1 um, the reason that you're already seeing the links is because um, it's a local host. Now this is what you call a loopback IP address. Um, it doesn't have to go out to the internet. It's what your computer pings to your network card to see if it's responding. So um, it works. Um, so we, we've gotten a response. Now I'm going to um, take a video um, on my phone as well. I'll try to go to this, uh, not this one, my computer's IP address using my phone. Uh, 192.168. Dot one dot one hundred go and look at that it says it works I've gotten a response in my iPhone as well so it is working throughout the network so anyone who is in this router uh, who's connected by my Wi-Fi my router can actually access this page now let's let's get into the next phase now that we know that our Apache is up and running a computer is reachable by um, other devices in our network let's get on to the second step now we need to know um, whereabouts is this file located because we need to put the link to our bank or whatever that we're using, uh, financial institutions website uh, that we're using to fool the user uh, at this place. Like wh where is this it works files? We need to find that one out. So that is going to be sudo v um, etc um, apache2 and uh, now we'll do httpd the conf and uh, we'll hit escape key and we'll try to find document hold on document root now that's our folder that's the directory that we're looking for so that's a library web server documents now this is where this it works files is located now we are going to get out of there, uh, vim, clear it up. <coughs> now let's see if we can find this file, so sudo, um, actually, change right to uh, library, web server, um, change right to documents, and uh, as we can see, there's an index.html.en, if I do index.html.en there you go, it works. So that's the file that we're using. Now, our next step is to change some settings in the social engineering toolkit file um, so that we can modify it to our system. Now from our last video we know the location of the files, the conf files um, for the social engineering toolkit. Now this is where we're going to go to and then we'll do etc slash um, set toolkit, yep, yeah, set toolkit um, so he, that's the one that we want to change. So we'll do sudo nano um, set.config. Um, oh, yeah, there you go. Right, so we we'll put passwords in. Um, uh, where do you go? Time delay, Apache directory, there you go. That's the one that we're looking for. So it's not www.html. Um, ours was a bit different wasn't it so ours was I'll start a new terminal just to make sure I don't mess it up so I think it was in our change right to library web server documents I think that was the one um, so I'll just copy this um, and paste it I don't want to type it manually and you know get an error but yeah there you go so we've saved it now we'll run our social engineering toolkit. So in order to do that, we'll go into our social engineering toolkit folder. That's our change drive to opt, um, change drive to social engineering toolkit. Yes. So we do have our file over there. So we'll do sudo um, set toolkit. Yep. And there you go. Uh, so what do you want to do? Uh, we are going to the social engineering attack. So we're going to go to one um, spear phishing. No, we're going to website attack vectors. So that is going to be two, and we are going to go to the credential harvest because that's what we're doing. We're harvesting the credentials. And now there are three options. You can custom import it or you can clone the website. Now this is what we're doing, two, clone. Now enter the IP address for post back in the harvester. 
tab naving. Now this is not the this is not the IP address for the website that you're cloning. This is the IP address for a machine because since we are hosting on a LAN, it is going to be our IP address. So whenever any devices in this network put our IP address, it is going to look like um, the clone website that we're going to put on. So that's our IP address. It's 192.168.1.100. There we go. Uh, now this is where we put the URL to clone. Now, um, what do we want? Do we want maybe NAB Bank? Do they have a login page? Of course they have a login page, Shotgun. Uh, but yeah, so you go to login. Now, um, if I go to this one, copy. Um, so I'm just going to copy the link. Now this is what I'm going to do. Paste. And enter. Uh, hold on, we got an error. Looks like the web server can't bind to AD. Are you sure you're running? Yeah, I am running Apache. What do you mean? Okay, um, let's do a bit of a, let's see if anything else is using our port 80, because apparently Social Engineering Toolkit wasn't able to access the port 80. Uh, what was the command? Netstat help, please. Uh, yeah, that one. So, netstat, no, oh, netstat, yeah, minus a, oh, hold on, a, a, l, l, and w space pipe and we'll do grep and we'll do listen uh hold on what am i doing uh how about just the a hold on how about a l a n oh there you go uh it's being used okay um surely it should require something to host the website so i'm i'm pretty sure apache should be running in the port but well, let's let's try. Uh, let's try to kill any process that is running there. So we'll do sudo lsf space minus t space uh, minus i fly, and then we'll do tcp. Our port number is going to be eighty uh, space ss, and we'll do tcp listen, and we'll do pipe sudo argument. Uh, sorry, x arguments kill. Righto. Um, we'll do the grip again. Okay, let's try. Let's try one thing. Uh, let's run Social Engineering Toolkit for now. If it still doesn't work, then we'll try stopping Apache service. Right. So let's go to um, <coughs> Set Toolkit. Yes. Um. So one, two, um, three. <laughs> one, two, three. Um, two. Um, so my IP address is going to be 192.168.1.100, yes sir, um, http slash slash facebook.com for now just to check, uh, okay, yeah, no, okay, so it is settled guys, we need to stop the Apache service as well, so just like how we started Apache, so it's going to be sudo, um, user, uh, bin, keep on doing bin all the time. Uh, S bin, yep. Yeah. Apache CTL, and we're going to do stop. There we go. Now that has stopped. Um, just to be on the safe side, I'm just going to restart the terminal. Um, I'm going to restart everything. Uh, go back to this one. We'll go to our social engineering tool the folder. So it's going to be change drive to opt. Yes, sir. Um, change over to social engine. I could have done it once, but yeah, I don't know why I did. Um, two CDs, but yeah. Um, so we do sudo um, set toolkit. Ugh, come on. Yep, there we go. Uh, finger cross. Hopefully it'll work this time. So yeah, so as always, we're going to social engineering attack. So that's one, uh, two, website attack vector. We're going to go to three now. So it's a credential. Oh, what the heck? Okay. <laughs> Credential Harvester, and we're going to go to Site Cloner. There we go. It's the IP address. So our IP address one hundred two dot one sixty eight dot one dot one hundred. Enter. Uh, enter the URL to clone. So that's going to be <coughs> the JSP file. I don't know if it'll work uh, since we've 
turn the Apache off, but... Ah, oh, dang it. So, it is working. Now, so, let's say we have hosted the website. So, this is equivalent to hosting the website somewhere. Now, what usually attacker would do is they'd host the website on a cPanel somewhere up in the cloud, um, get a convincing domain name. In our case, our convincing domain name is 10.10.102.168.100. That's going to be our convincing um, address instead of ComBank or NAB Bank. Uh, but yeah, now the next thing I'll do is probably go to like a SIM service. Um, let's say I go to, I'll go to something like Mailify. So uh, now that we're in uh, Mailify, what, we, what I'm going to do is I am going to create um, a campaign. So I'll do create a campaign. Um, we want SMS campaign, uh, marketing type, notification type, probably. And I'd say um, totally <laughs> genuine campaign for YouTube. Um, I don't even know how to spell YouTube, guys. This is this is how bad I am. Uh, yes, I have. Okay, confirming the choice. Um, in this campaign, I'm just gonna go to um, select a list uh, recipients. A little recipients. Um, so I'll add a contact. Um, I'll add a manual entry. So the contact has been added to the list. I'm just going to close it. Now I'm going to go to messages and I'm going to type. I'm going to type something like, "This is an automated uh, message. Um, you have authorized authorized a payment of seven hundred and eighty dollars." Um, if you didn't validate this purchase, click the link below to get a refund. Now this right here is going to be where I put my um, URL. So this would be something like, since I'm using an NAB bank, um, not that it works, we'll try it later, but yeah, we're using NAB Internet Banking. Um, so it's going to be something like NAB dot, um, so it's not going to be NAB.com because the domain is already reserved, but it's, not, it's going to be something like account uh, refund um, NAB.com. So something like that. So the domain only costs you about, what, like 12 bucks? 20 bucks max. Um, and that's how they do it. But in our case, it's going to be. Um, our IP address, so it's going to be uh, 182.168.10.100, or 1.100. So this is our IP address. So I'm just going to see if it works. So we'll do next. So if I do send. Now there you go, we've, we've received a message. Um, I don't know why you got two of them, but yeah, you must have formatted in a different way. Um, but yeah, so I've gotten a text. So I'm just going to go on my phone, start recording uh, so that you guys can see. So it says, oh, this is an automated message. You have authorized a payment of that much. So what I would do as a completely unsuspecting user, because it says NAB Internet Banking, I click on this one, and this would take me to this website. Now I'll show you what happens when I put the credentials in. Um, so I can't do both at the same time on my phone. Um, I'll probably do it from a computer so that you guys can see as well. So uh, yeah, so as you can see the URL is still my computer's IP address. Now if you were to compare the website, it looks legit like this. Now as we open the link, um, you can see that it might have gotten something, uh, 1.101. So as you can see, it's 102.168.1.101. That's the IP address from my phone. Now, if I refresh it again, go there you go. So it's not looking for any other activities, just this link. Now, the next thing we want to do, I want to show you guys just over here, so I'm just not going to use my phone because it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, what I want to do is I'll show you what it looks like when I put the credential. Now, that's 
that's the real NAB's website. So I'm going to go to 127.0.0.1 because that's our loopback. Enter. And look at that. So the it works has been changed to NAB Internet Banking. It looks legit the same. It is the same page. Now what I want to do is I want to put my ID. So it's going to be uh, my bank account number is 4567890. The password is going to be very strong password. Oh, don't forget the numbers 123. Login. Uh, not now. Now, as you can see, uh, it is Safari can't open the page, but we can change it to stay in a way that, uh, remind me later, um, stay in a page that it is using. Um, no, it says Safari can't open the page, but at this point it doesn't really matter because um, we've already gotten the credential. Look at that user ID uh, 90, user ID is that, the password is a very strong password 123 that we used and uh, that's pretty much how it works now it is that simple to steal your credential and it is that simple to clone any website and now all they have to do is instead of doing it so i'm only doing it in local lan uh, meaning only the devices that is connected to my router um, can access this page so it's hosted locally but if i wish to download all the files um, link it to my database and put it up on the cloud um, and get a convincing domain hypothetically I'd be able to fool anyone um, so that's why you should never click on a link that is sent to you via SMS if it's an unsolicited link don't click it if you didn't ask for it if you didn't sign up for it you're not gonna get a link um, just call a bank if you have a problem I hope you guys enjoyed the video now that's how you use social engineering toolkits uh, credential harvester and site cloner now if you guys have any problems uh, just let me know. I'll try to help you guys. And I'll do some other videos um, going through other module in the in the social engineering toolkit um, in the future. Now, in the meantime, stay awesome. Um, have you been testing? See you guys later.